Hi everyone, it's John. I have another book review for you this week. Uh, this week is a review of a book by an author I've never read before. So one of the things I'm trying to do this year is make up for a lot of the blind spots that I have in my fiction reading. And actually the next video I'll have for you next week is 10 authors that I hope to read, not necessarily this year, but in the next couple of years at least, and uh, 10 writers that uh, I'm curious to see if you've ever heard of or read. I know you will have heard of several of them, but um, your opinions about them, and um, maybe share my reviews with them as I happen to get to them. But this week, I want to talk about one of the uh, relatively few novels of John Cheever. He was rather known for another um, form of fiction writing, the short story, which I'll get to in a second. But this is Bullet Park. Um, he wrote two other novels, two other novels called the Wapshot novels, uh, the Wapshot Chronicle and the Wapshot Scandal, I believe. And those are probably a, among his most famous novels. I've never read them. I have one. But this was a really wonderful reading experience. The short stories of John Cheever have also remained a blind spot in my reading of, fiction, reading of fiction, despite the fact that their reputation sometimes precedes their author. They they are his best-known form of fiction writing. Uh, if anyone knows John Cheever, it's usually through his short stories. And considering the sharp surgical knife that Cheever brings to his writing about mid-20th century bourgeois American life, this is a point I, I really want to fix in the coming years. Uh, after having devoted much of the year to trying to read fiction by authors I've never read before, and being met with relatively few truly exciting discoveries, the language that Cheever brings to fiction makes that wait all the more worth it. The plot here is simple enough, which is to say that it would be considered flimsy and and improbable in the hands of someone less adept than Cheever himself. The the self-assured Elliot Nails, his name is spelled N-A-I-L-L-E-S, is a mouthwash salesman who identifies himself as a chemist, and his, his and his wife inhabit the community of Bullet Park, which is a, a well-to-do neighborhood replete with its 2.3 children per household, its white picket fences, and, and bland self-complacency, general waspishness. Much of the first part of the book, dedicated to Elliot and his family, details their efforts to uh, tend to their son Tony's mental malaise, which suddenly and inexplicably sets in one day and has confined him to his bed for weeks. The second part of the book is dedicated to a bullet park parvenu named Paul Hammer. I, I know the hammer and nails thing, too, sort of make, made me groan. I thought it was really below the, <laughs> the, the tools of a talented novelist to do something like that, but I thought it was a little cringe-inducing, but... The other aspects of the novel sort of made it able to be uh, forgiven, I guess. Paul has spent much of his young adulthood aimlessly traveling the world, being pretty much just a flaneur, and translating the poetry of Eugenio Montal in a self-induced alcoholic stupor, only to arrive at Bullet Park. So it's... It's here that Paul decides to turn his mother's final deathbed words about the soteriological power of crucifying someone in Bullet Park into a reality. Despite being 50 years old, this reads very much ahead of its time. In fact, uh, this is the 50th anniversary year of the novel's publication. It was published in 1969. 
In a way that coldly and icily diagnoses the problems of modern American life, spares no one in its bitterness and cynicism. Elliot needs tranquilizers to make it throughout the day. Tony, his son, can only find a cure by having his mother seek out some Eastern Swami come guru, which I can only interpret as Cheever's Morton's take on the perniciousness of New Age philosophy that started to enter American culture in the 60s. Tony also spends hour after hour glued to a flickering television at the expense of anything and everything else. The only way to make his affliction more modern would have been to foresee someone watching endless cat videos on YouTube or maybe the ubiquity of video games. The biggest flaw, or at least one aspect of the novel I didn't like as much as the others, was that the clash between nails and hammer happens in the very last few pages of the novel, almost as an afterthought. We get the biographical sketch of both Nails and Hammer, Nails in the first part, Hammer in the second, and then the climax between them, almost out of nowhere, out of nothing. Ex nihilo. <laughs> the, the enmity between the two characters should have been better explained, I think. Um, they don't really know one another leading up to the event. There's no, there's no reason why Hammer would want to murder anyone, uh, let alone Nails' son. But um, I can't help but think that this is Cheever's little way of trying to say that evil hardly ever announces itself with, without with screaming and, and, and the waving of hands. Instead, maybe he's trying to say that evil has a banality of its own that makes it all the more dangerous. And Cheever's possibly more interested in looking at chance and, and the role of Capris than maybe raw physical human intent. Other than that, that part of the novel that wasn't fully fleshed out for me, this was really a transformative pleasure to read. There's there's sort of a pathological joy I get from writers whose eye for social commentary is so acute and as well attuned as John Cheever's is. Just like in the novels of Richard Yates, one might come for the well-manicured begonias and faux marble caryatids circumscribing the sunny porches of anywhere in USA, but you stay for the fears the frustrations and the quiet Weltschmerz that are so expertly and clinically attended to in the lives of Cheever's characters. A really, really a lovely novel and uh, beautifully done. John Cheever's Bullet Park. Let me know if you've read it or if you have opinions of uh, Cheever's short stories, which I know are more popular, so many of you might be more exposed to those. I will see you next week, guys. Bye.